skills that you have on the bike to protect your control so that you are always in charge of the situation. So that suddenly inertia doesn't take you and send you off the track. Speed doesn't send you off the track. If those two things take over, then you no longer have control. You haven't protected your control. It's sort of like, you know, somebody, if you're sitting in a, in a you know, you ride to a cafe and you see your bike, park, you, know, you park your bike where you can see it, you're sitting there enjoying a uh, pleasant non-alcoholic beverage, and um, you, know, you see somebody over there by your bike, you don't think anything of it. You look over there again, the next thing you know, the guy's the person's on your bike and start to push it away or something. What's your, what's your immediate gut response? Protect it, yeah, you know, protect it. And that's kind of the analogy that we can make with this idea of control. We can try to gain control of the bike through the use of our skills and then hang on to it, protect it from things like especially inertia, which is always trying to pull us in a, way, in a direction we don't want to go. So we have to kind of manage it. So that's kind of what we're going to talk about for a few minutes. And we're going to talk about those skills. So vision. Let's take a look at the eyes of Valentino Rossi. Can everybody see his eyes inside that picture? It's real dark inside of his visor, but you can see his eyes are rolled up as far into the top of his head as he can possibly get them in order to look down the track and still maintain that body position. Now granted, that's a pretty aggressive body position, but um, he's gonna, he has his eyes as far up inside there as he possibly can, projecting them as far down the track as possible. Um, when Valentino talks about how he thinks about the track, at the speeds they travel, they think 10 seconds ahead. It's a long, long time. What we want to do is think ahead of where we are right now. So your riders, eyes are always up, and they're always scanning the environment. They're always looking ahead to the next corner. Once you see that corner, you're looking at the cliff point, then you're looking at where you're going to leave that corner, and then you're looking at the straightaway, and then you're looking at the next corner. You almost, you rarely look where you are you already achieved that by looking ahead. It's, and, and you use a combination of your peripheral vision and your central vision. So your central vision is projecting ahead to the next section of track while your peripheral vision reminds you of where you are. And if you're looking ahead, things will start to slow down. When you speed up, we all have a tendency to focus down because we get a little nervous. And the more downward we look, the faster it seems like we're going, the less in control we feel, the more uncomfortable we are. If you can convince yourself to keep your eyes up, it'll slow down the entire environment. And pretty soon you'll feel, start feeling a lot more comfortable and a lot more in control. I'm not sure why my slides didn't stay on the screen. I'm sorry. Um, visualize. If you can't see it, visualize what could happen. Visualize what is coming. You know, when you're headed down the main street here, think about one and two. Where am I going to be? Where's that turn-in point? Where's that, where's that clip point? You know, everybody see the cones today, right? We saw the cones. I tried to point them out. Everybody get a good feel for the line. Think about where those cones are. As you're heading down the straight, you're tucked into the bike, take that moment to visualize, okay, I'm coming up on one and two. Remember where that cone is. I want to clip there. I want to head out through there. Think about the track as you go through it. Also, when you're in the classroom, if you have a minute, and you're relaxing in your trailer, you can sit there in the AC, whatever, close your eyes and, and try to picture the track in your mind. Try to visualize what the track looks like. The more of that you can do, the easier this is going to get. The more confident you're going to be, the more uh, relaxed you're going to be. Visualizing, I think, is the key to so much of it. If you can really see where you want to go in your mind, then you'll be able to get there on the bike. Does that make sense? Try that. Um, have a couple more. Uh, you can also see this guy turn up and out. He's not looking where he is in the turn. He's already he's already analyzed that information, look, thinking ahead, visualizing ahead. He's now looking down the track to the next obstacle, to the next well, obstacle. That's motocross track, uh, motocross talk. To the next turn, to the next section of track. You guys notice how his eyes kind of look like they're rolled up in his head a little bit. It's all kind of white. Um, once, once you start getting really some, some extreme lean angles and you really start getting over, you'll find a lot that you'll have to do this and you'll kind of have to look up this way. Um, if you've got your helmet, if, if you've got a helmet that's, that just sits right here on your forehead, you're going to want to push that up as much as you can so that when you're down, you have the ability to, you have the line of vision to see. So if you're having a problem when you're over, see, push your helmet up. It's, it's real quick fix. 
and that will allow you to really put your eyes up and see where, you, where you're going, the place you're about to uh, head into. And it, once you're able to convince yourself, it, it takes a little practice. Don't expect to achieve it the next time out. Practice it, but once you do kind of begin to do that, you'll be amazed at how the whole world just seems to slow down. And you have much more, you feel like you have much more time to make decisions and get the right things done before you arrive at that next section. Um, here's another example of, of, of seeing ahead. You're, you know, you're at the clip point in this corner. I tried to get a laser pointer, but I didn't have one. Um, didn't get one. But you're looking all the way ahead to the exit of the next turn. This is Texas World, by the way, turn three. Um, but you can see all the way out to the exit point of this one. You're not looking down here at the clip point. And you, your eyes have already passed by the exit. You're looking at the clip point and then the exit of the following turn. Does that graphic help? Uh, what we're talking about. And again, it's not something you're going to achieve immediately, but it's something you can practice all the time on your street bike. You know, uh, visualize. I, I, when I ride on the street, which is rarely these days, I'm always thinking about okay, who's going to who's going to make a left turn in front of me? You know, what could happen up here? Here's an intersection. There's a lot of stuff coming and going here. Could this person come out of here? Where could my next hazard come from? So it's it's a very applicable skill to the street as well. Um, another aspect of visualization is this idea of tunnel vision. Uh, we tend to we tend to when we get a little nervous or we're uncomfortable, we tend to narrow our field of vision. And oftentimes, it's when it comes, becomes narrow, it also goes down. So we're looking at at a, at a 10 foot square spot on the track, 20 yards in front of us, at 80 miles an hour. That's that's dangerous. So open up. Use your peripheral vision to see where you are, and use your primary vision to see where you're going. And, and go ahead. Oh, uh, I was going to say one one good way to, to really kind of visualize that is if you if everybody will do me a favor and, and stare at this little dot right here. Do you see how your focus is? Do you see much to either side when you're staring at it? Kind of hard to see to either side, isn't it? So do me a favor and just cross your eyes just a little bit. Just just unfocus your eyes. And you'll feel like you're just barely crossing. And all of a sudden your vision opens up. And you're not focused on any one thing. You're not focused on this or anything else. But you, all of a sudden you see everything. And, and you, can, you don't have you're not, you don't have that type of vision like that. So, that's one thing that, that I always practice when I'm out there is, is you don't focus on anything. If you ever find yourself focusing on that scary looking patch of pavement or where does that come, if you find yourself focusing on that, then you know that you're, you're probably really not looking where you need to be, which is down the track. So if you ever start focusing on something or start noticing something every single time, you know, maybe you're scared of that dark patch of pavement, quit looking at it. Because it's not doing you any good. It's just a mental block to, to be able to ride this person. And, you know, on the road, it's tar stains or something. You know, you're always focusing in on something. It looks a little iffy, and you cut your focus quite quickly. Uh, another, just another kind of image of, of where you're looking. Uh, for example, um, like in the Hill Country, this is obviously not our Hill Country. It's a little green for that, but um, in the Arkansas. But you see the line through there that says, point your nose at your imagined line, and then look as far ahead as you can see. You know, your vision, the vanishing point is out there the end of that left-hander, but that's where you want to be looking, on the road, out on the out on the farm and market roads or wherever, is how far ahead can you actually see? And if you're scanning, you're always reading, I use the word reading the environment, it works for me, um, you know, always assessing what's going on around me and what's coming up, always scanning and reading what, what the surroundings are, feeding my brain information ahead of time so that it has time to process whatever it is that's coming. That's really kind of how your brain works. And on the track, it becomes even more important because of the speed. Here you may be traveling 40 or 50 miles an hour. Out there it might be 80 to 120 miles an hour. So the more information you can feed into your brain by scanning and reading the environment, the more comfortable you're going to be. It really does. It is a comfort and control issue. Okay. Questions about that? Visualizing, seeing, 